Netflix for Nestle, 4% lower nearly on that stock. Abhira Melasurupu is with, uh, with us, Head of Equity at uh, BNP uh, Paribas India. Uh, Abhira, I'm great to have you with us here. Thank you very much. Any insights from your dealing room on what's happening uh, with the market since uh, 1.30 or so? Bit of a roller coaster. Yeah, well, I, I did hear what you were saying, and I think we did the same checks, which is to look at the news from the geopolitical side, U.S. futures and all of that. And frankly, we think it is a, a localized issue. It just could be the case of uh, you know one or two large sellers, but nothing specific that we've come across either. It's, uh, at the end of the day, intraday moves do happen, and, uh, and not each one of them kind of sustains. Yeah, no, <clears throat> got that, absolutely. Uh, by the way, Abhiram, uh, with the earnings now also in full flow, just wanted to get a quick sense on uh, tech earnings. We'll put out a preview on Infosys in, in just a bit, Rima, we'll do that, but we have numbers from TCS. And since then, there's uh, been a general, uh, sort of the mood is a little bit, bit down as far as the sector is concerned about what can happen. Infi in particular, going into these results, is down about uh, you know, 17-18% uh, from the last quarter levels. Uh, do you think the risk reward sets up in a more favorable way as compared to TCS here? Yeah, I think I've kind of maybe been maintaining through the years so far that, you know, uh, the move aside uh, of the down move over the past few days, like you mentioned, I think the triggers are still set up for a, a positive return from here on. And, you know, a sell-off like this usually is, is followed by a recovery. Now, I think what's really set this off is, is the fact that, um, you know, commentary around discretionary spending has not been positive. In fact, companies have still sounded cautious, uh, those who've spoken so far. And the the reality is that more, almost all of these companies are sitting on very big order books. It's therefore a question of, uh, of when rather than if. And so I would think that uh, as the commentary starts to improve, may not happen during the this quarter simply because they have to give out a full year guidance of some sort. And usually companies tend to be a little conservative to start with. But once we look beyond that, I think the triggers are probably positive. Risk reward is probably positive rather than negative from here on. Mm. Uh, Abhiram, from the last time we spoke, uh, this is a general question across sectors. Uh, what has changed on the ground? What do your channel checks suggest? Is there a new opportunity which has emerged? Are there sectors where we are seeing increased headwinds? I think between now and then, really, uh, the, the ground up data has still been very strong. Um, and therefore, nothing really has changed around that. And I think the last time we spoke, I did maintain that there's really not a massive negative trigger up till at least the elections. Uh, what's changed between now and then is that uh, the possibility of rate cuts, especially in the US, have been pushed out. And therefore, as a house, we've taken a call that rather than have three cuts, we'll probably have two for the rest of the year. And that's what seems to be priced in into the fixed income markets as well. So that is the number one kind of thing. The number two aspect is, of course, the geopolitical uh, risk around Iran and Israel and, and, and therefore the impact on oil prices, which again, if we think is not escalated to a significant extent, then is still somewhat manageable. So the reality is that between then and now, we haven't had a lot of positive news come out but we've had some negative news come out and that explains why there's general nervousness in the market at the moment. There's a fair amount of uh, nervousness indeed, Abhiram. In fact, uh, you know, one would have thought that the elections being a foregone conclusion, the markets would go only one way up, but turns out uh, there are a fair amount of, uh, you know, volatility inducers, so to say, from uh, the global uh, areas as well. So in this decline, in this nervousness, if you were to buy something, what would it be? Well, again, if we take a 12-month view at the very least, and, and maybe a little longer than that. Then there are two elements from an India perspective. First, first just look at the structural element where, you know, obviously, I mean, after all our recent meetings with investors, the one thing that does come out is the structural positivity that, that the investors have on the country. The expectation is that there will be policy continuity going forward, but also the fact that India's standing in, at the global level is rising, and that's what is leading to leading to lower risk premiums for the country. And therefore, that positive structural element will continue. The second aspect is obviously the cyclical part. Now, given the fact that elections are probably the biggest trigger for the rest of the year, and once that event is done, I do suspect that there may be some amount of profit taking. And that, again, will probably lead to 
more buying opportunities from the long term perspective. Now, in those, if you look at it, the market texture is rather similar to last year, where the, the leaders are still still the leaders, that is reality, autos, etc. And the laggards are pretty much still the laggards, which is uh, financials and IT and so on. So I suspect that after this uh, election catalyst is over, there will be some flight to quality. And that is when I think that banks and IT will start to recover. And that's when the fundamentals also will meet this because you'll probably see the last of the margin pressure for banks by then and also probably improved commentary from IT companies by then. So I think that could be a critical moment in the market. Uh, Abhiram, India's dance with democracy begins tomorrow. Phase one of polling starts across various states. How do you expect this time elections to impact markets um, in the run up till we get the verdict and even post? Well, normally, I and mean, if you go back to the various elections that we've had over the last 20 years or so, you normally had a rally before the elections. And I do not see why this time should be vastly different. Of course, this time we have each time is different and you do have some geopolitical risks and so on. But India is still seen as, as the place for growth. Um, and therefore, and that conviction has only increased in the last month or so since, since all our meetings with investors. So I think that uh, the case for a rally is probably stronger than a correction before the elections. It may not, I, don't, I really don't know how big a rally that would be. Now, once the elections end, I think investors will sit back and start to look at where are the numbers. Now, if you take valuations today at 20, 21 times, it really does not leave a lot of scope for upside. Right? Our target is 23,500 for the Nifty, which means we're looking at maybe a 6 7% upside through the rest of the year. And that's when people stop and say, OK, let's get a little more sector specific, a bit more stock specific. And I think we'll start to move along those lines once the elections are over. Right, uh, Viram, uh, you know, just before we let you go, uh, would you have a word on uh, some of the mid caps that are there right now? In fact, as we speak, the mid cap index has moved to the low point of trade, has uh, taken a sharp turn for the worse. And if you just pull up, you know, the intraday chart of uh, the advanced decline ratio, you'll see that stocks that are declining have now uh, gone above the stocks which are advancing. So the crisscross lines have actually crossed past and now we have around 1200 stocks. Okay, there you have it which are declining for about 1120 stocks which are advancing. Are there pockets of value emerging in the mid-cap end of things uh, or you would be capital uh, agnostic? Well, I, broadly, we are capital agnostic. If I had to pick in terms of caps, I'd probably pick large caps. Now, that said, the mid-cap index is actually a vast index in terms of the options available. There are many, many companies and sectors represented. For example, most recently, one of our uh, uh, reports was on on ports and logistics, an area that we really like. And that's a space which has a lot of mid and small cap companies. In fact, mid, mid cap companies, an uh, area that we are quite positive. We like consumer durables quite a bit. You see the, like they say, the summer is hotting up and it's, it's not a bad time to look at that space. Some areas, especially around hospitals, uh, these are all themes that we like. Broadly, anything to do around, you know, affluent discretionary spending. And, and logistics and capital uh, capital goods and capex and those kind of themes. And the mid-cap space actually has a lot of such options. So while the mid-caps in it cap index as a whole seems to be quite expensive, and that's that's probably reality well compared to its history. There are several pockets that investors can focus on. Mm. All right. You want to name a few? I mean, stuff that you guys have written on, where, where this, where, what you published? Yeah, most recently we actually had... Uh, Ports and logistics, we had about five or six companies around that. I won't go into the specifics of each of them. And also we had a pretty big uh, channel check kind of a report come out around uh, around the consumer durable space, more specifically around air conditioners and, and, and uh, lighting and fans and so on and so forth. So those two areas are ones that we're really working on. All right. Uh, you know, just a word on uh, the market. Yeah. Uh, briefly moved below 22,000 for the Nifty. Mm. And that's important because it happened just after 3 p.m. So the expiry move happened on the downside. However, it will be very interesting to see whether the market goes and sustains below that 21,985 mark. Why do I say that? Because the 22,000 put has the maximum open interest, around 2.5 crore shares outstanding. And the premium available on that is close to around 15 rupees. So if it sustains below that 21,985 mark for a fair amount of time, then all these put writers will suddenly be out of the money and may have to cover their positions, causing a further fall in the market. So where we are right now is extremely crucial. 22,000, slightly below that, but with a lot of open interest 
on the short side, the 22,000 put that is. Absolutely, and uh, this is getting worse, right? I mean, uh, uh, 140, full 140 point fall, uh, nothing to be uh, scoffed at. And of course, I mean, if you look at uh, things and how they've panned out from the uh, beginning of the day, I mean, there's a huge, big red candle, right? The high was 22,326, hmm. uh, and we're at basically 22,000. So 300 points knocked off uh, from the day's highest point. And this has all happened in the last two hours, essentially, because 1.30 or, uh, is when the fall started, a bit of a recovery, and then there's a second dip which has happened, which of course has taken us to fresh lows, uh, really speaking. So, uh, you know, not looking great at all. Nifty Bank is uh, the other one. It's down a full, near 1%, uh, and that also, by the way, is almost at the day's lowest uh, point. So in tandem, both the Nifty and the Bank Nifty. Ticker team uh, tells us that it's the first time that Nifty has fallen below 22,000 in this fiscal, at least. That's FY25. Mm. And the Nifty Bank also at the risk of uh, breaking below that 47,000 mark. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think you're basically now looking, Mangalam, at uh, the you know, lows from where this rally started. When I say lows, I mean the March 2024 lows. Mm. Uh, you know, that correction that we had from the highs in January to the lows of March. So for the Nifty, that is 21,700. Uh, the exact uh, sort of low is what, 20, 21, 7, 10 is that low. Uh, then we, we had a straight 1,000 point up move. And uh, we're now getting closer and closer to that level, 21, 989. We'll take a quick commercial break here. We'll come back. We'll uh, get you some technical trading ideas. Mitesh will be back with us. Uh, we'll have more stocks we discuss as well. Stay with us. for watching CNBC TV 18. For all our top stories and news updates, follow us on our social media platforms.